Good day everyone. Today I'm going to be presenting our study entitled COVID Stress Predicts Depression, Anxiety, and Stress Symptoms of Filipino Respondents. This study was conducted last year to determine if Filipinos experience COVID stress and if this is a predictor of higher levels of depression, anxiety, and stress. And this is a cross-sectional study, which means that there are various age groups and the data has been collected from various places in the country. First, for the background of the study, it is believed that during an epidemic, the number of people whose mental health is affected is greater than the number of people infected by the virus. In other words, we are not only dealing with the pandemic itself, we're also dealing with the mental health implications of the pandemic. And there are empirical findings supporting these statements. For example, in a study conducted by Gao and Associates, they show that there is an elevated amount of distress reported during the initial outbreak of the COVID pandemic. And other than that, here are some other factors that may come into play. For example, the uncertainty about having the disease or the uncertainty that one of your family members may contract the virus is another risk factor that elevates the risk of having various psychological concerns. And there are also some scholars who argue that the pandemic can trigger anxiety and obsessive compulsive symptoms such as um, cleaning, sanitizing, so on and so forth. And this is especially true among those people who have pre-existing mental health concerns even before the COVID outbreak, which is in line with what the diathesis stress model is suggesting. So COVID stress refers to the amount of distress brought about by the pandemic. This is a term coined by Taylor and colleagues back in 2020, and they constructed and developed a scale in attempt to quantify COVID stress. And according to them, the COVID stress has various facets, including danger and contamination. Danger refers to the fear of COVID, while contamination refers to the, this is concerned with the fear of contracting the virus when you are exposed, when you are in public spaces, when you are shopping, for example. And they also included socioeconomic concerns, for example, the fear that the groceries might run out of supplies. And they also um, included xenophobia or the fear of foreigners in the context of their scale. And they also included traumatic stress symptoms as well as compulsive checking here in the Philippine context. Do we experience COVID stress? And is this related to higher amounts of depression, anxiety? And stress. So now for the methodology, there were 433 respondents who took part in this study, composed of 322 females, 91 males, with an average age of 25.5. Of course, we used the COVID stress scales or CSS by Taylor and colleagues to measure COVID stress. And for the, for the mental health measure, we utilized the DAS-21, the Depression, Anxiety, and Stress Scale, to quantify depression, anxiety, and stress of the same participants. And now let me present the results of the hierarchical regression analysis. The reason for using hierarchical regression is first we would like to examine the impact of um, demographic characteristics such as age, sex, and occupation. Then after that, we inserted the different facets of the COVID stress scales in the analysis. So as we can see in the step one of the regression analysis, only age is associated with all the outcome variables. And take note that there is a negative relationship between age and these outcome variables, which suggests that being younger makes you more, pr more prone in experiencing stress, anxiety, and depression. Other than that, sex and occupation did not significantly predict these three outcome variables. But as we can see, the demographic characteristics only explained a little amount of variance in all three outcome variables. But when we inserted the COVID stress facets into the model, we can see an elevation in the coefficient of determination as displayed in the screen. And now we can look at the results one by one for stress. We found that danger 
contamination, and trauma are all significantly related to stress. The fear of COVID, the fear of contamination, and the presence of traumatic symptoms, tra traumatic stress symptoms, such as difficulty sleeping, is related to stress. Interestingly, the fear of strangers is negatively associated with stress. For anxiety, um, it was predicted by danger and contamination, just like in stress, as well as traumatic stress symptoms, suggesting that it also it's not only related to the feelings of stress, but it may also be a trigger for those with anxiety symptoms, the fear of COVID and the fear of being contaminated. While for depression, it is negatively associated with xenophobia, and it had a positive association with traumatic stress symptoms, suggesting that those with, uh, for example, difficulty sleeping, those with intrusive thoughts, are the individuals who are more likely to experience depression. And other than that, let me present the comparison of DAS scores across various um, groups. For example, we compare the DAS scores of, of students, of those who are employed, those who are unemployed, and those who did not specify. As we can see, those who are unemployed have the highest amount of depressive symptoms followed by students. So for those who are unemployed, maybe their um, sudden unemployment. And um, although this is not the main focus of our study, we also attempted to validate, to evaluate the psychometric properties of the, of the COVID stress scales in the country. Uh, the six-factor model, which was initially proposed by Taylor and colleagues, actually in the first, in the initial model, it had uh, not so acceptable fit indices. So we had to modify the model, which means we, we correlated some error terms. And according to some scholars, this is justified in instances wherein there are similarities between the items. And we see that the six-factor model yielded acceptable fit indices according to the criteria set by Hu and Bentler. But we also tested the alternative five-factor model wherein contamination and danger were merged into the same subscale. The modified six-factor model is still better when it comes to fit indices compared to the modified five-factor model. So this suggests that perhaps it is better to not merge the danger and contamination subscale in case there will be future studies that will also utilize the COVID stress scales in their um, analysis. So for the discussion, so the results of this study suggest that during the initial outbreak, the respondents highly believe that COVID-19 is dangerous. They were afraid of, ha of having the virus. They're afraid of being diagnosed with COVID-19. And they are more likely to practice obsessive compulsive or OC-like behaviors such as sanitizing, frequent hand washing in attempt to protect themselves. The respondents also, they were concerned with the socioeconomic consequences of the pandemic. For example, they were afraid that the groceries might close. They were afraid that they might run out of resources, etc. Interestingly, they had the lowest score in traumatic stress symptoms, and this is concerned with intrusive thoughts and difficulty sleeping. And perhaps we should um, treat this finding as tentative and more studies are needed, um, perhaps a follow-up study uh, to monitor the amount of traumatic stress symptoms among, among those people in areas that are considered high risk. So in this study, we found out that the COVID-19 pandemic elevates the risk of developing various psychological disturb disturbances, which supports the statement of Riordan back in 2015 that we are not only concerned with the pandemic, we're also concerned with the uh, mental health implications of the pandemic. For the limitations, here are some of them. Of course, we use a foreign scale that, that is in English instead of using a scale that is written using the local language. So there might be some validity issues or perhaps our results are limited to those who are English speaking. And the data was gathered during the initial outbreak. Perhaps a follow-up study is necessary in order to determine if there are some changes in the levels of, for example, um, fear of having COVID or the amount of traumatic stress symptoms, etc. And for our conclusion, we are not just battling the pandemic, but also the mental health consequences 
of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's it for our presentation. Thank you very much.